All right, so for week three, we have several things we want to accomplish. If we look in the syllabus, for example, we still need to talk about um, user agent detection, geolocation, local storage. So those are things we're looking at for this week. The work that I ended up with last week on Thursday, um, we will uh, bring it back. Uh, if you'd like to use my project, you can, or you can use yours if you'd like. So my work is in the network folder. You want to open computer window, classroom data, campus Android 1, and last week's work has last week's date. You want to copy the whole folder. If you're going to use my work, you want to copy the whole folder. So I'm going to copy that folder to my flash drive. And I'm going to change the date so that it's today's date. <clears throat> and by the end of the day, I will put a copy of my work uh, in the network folder. So I'm going to copy that over. So you should copy the folder, uh, and the way, and the reason I want you to copy the whole folder as is there because it's got the date, it will be today's work, then inside it's got a folder, a mobile website, and then inside of there is our work. Now the reason I want it this way is remember we talked about this last week in that we are creating uh, an adapt an adaptive web design type of website, in that depending on the user's browser and, and such, it will either give them the mobile, mobile version or the full version. The mobile version then is going to be in its own folder, mobile website, for example, and then the full version on a different one. We'll get to that later. But my folder has this sort of setup, mobile website, and then inside it's got the index, HTML file, and then the JavaScript and the CSS files. So that's what we need to have ourselves set up with. Uh, you can open all three of those. Did you know this trick that if you select all three of the files, right-click any one of them, you can open all three of them at once in Notepad++. So go ahead and do that. Go ahead and open up all three of the files and then we'll get started. All right, so you should have a copy of uh, last week's work. We'll open it in Notepad. And so what we've got is the CSS file, the JS file, and the HTML file. 
So if we, um, if we have the index file open, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it in Chrome, just because, remember, I, I like the, the responsive web design. I like the little emulator that it comes with a little better than Firefox. Firefox is OK. But to remind you, go ahead and run it in Chrome. When the site loads up, you want to press F12 on the keyboard. Because I'm in Chrome, I then have the, the icon right there, Toggle Device Toolbar. So you want to toggle Device Toolbar, and then you'll get the you'll get the, the more mobile-friendly version, and any of these should work, but I'm going to put it over on Galaxy S5. <coughs> so this is just to quickly remind ourselves about what we've got. We've got this home page, home screen, needs a lot of little work here and there. Uh, art screen, content, uh, computers, screen, none of that is fully functional yet, so we've still got a few things to do to fully set this up and to get the practice of, of working with this. In the in Notepad, the first thing that I want to do before I go much further is at the very top we've got references to the online versions of the supporting files. We've got jQuery and jQuery Mobile the online versions, the CDN versions, the online versions. What I want to do is download, I want to get local copies of those. I want to go to the websites and download the local copies, the latest versions. Um, the latest versions of these files, I want to download them and keep them locally in my project because this assumes you have an online connection for this to work. Obviously, if this is the point that it's a website, yes, the website is online. Therefore, the website can connect to these uh, online files. But eventually, we're going to get this as an app. And we want to set ourselves up so that the person doesn't necessarily need an online connection to use our site. If these two, I mean, if these three connections here to these online services don't work, what we get is that. A completely blank kind of site. Every single page is on one screen. There's no more pages, there's no more buttons, there's no more nav bars and menus and all that cool stuff. It goes back to the most basic HTML design. So that would be horrible if we get it to the point that it's a mobile device and the person is not connected online for whatever reason, and then that's what our app looks like. So we want to download the online versions to bring them into our project locally. <laughs> locally. So let's go to your web browser. First we'll go to jQueryMobile.com. Let's go to jQueryMobile.com. <coughs> we need to download the files. I'll show you where. And then we need to alter our code a bit so that it points to the local versions. So uh, this is obviously then, as I said, the manual of uh, jQuery Mobile. And on the right side it says download jQuery Mobile. We've got custom download and latest stable. You can experiment with custom download at, at your leisure, but what custom download does is um, you can select which branch, and then what features do you want? Do we want animation, namespace, orientation, all of that stuff? Most likely we do want everything here, although the, the point of that custom download is perhaps our app doesn't require certain things. So you can customize your, your, your code. We don't want that. We want the latest stable. We want the whole jQuery framework. Later on as we get more adept at this, we could download a custom version that's smaller, therefore more efficient. But here click on latest stable. And right away it'll start to, it should start to download. It will download about seven and a half megabytes. The 
depending on your browser. I'm in Chrome, so it downloaded right away, right there. If you're in Firefox, you will see a little triangle on the top right corner that you downloaded. Or it may say, it may pop up and say, would you like to save it, or would you like to open it? Um, you want to save it. This zip file contains a lot of things. We don't need a lot of the things it comes with. So I'm going to tell you which things we do need. Once you download it, you want to open your zip file. It comes with all of these files. We only need three of these 20 files. Um, it's going to be the ones at the bottom. <coughs> So we got all of these things. If you, they all look almost exactly the same, but the three that matter are at the bottom: jQuery Mobile 145.min.css, jQuery Mobile 145.min.js, and jQuery Mobile 145.min.map. I'll explain that one in a moment. These are the three that we need. Everything else, we don't need. There's a jQuery.css and a jQuery.js. These two are equivalent to these two, except that these two are minified. These two are optimized. And you can tell right here. The unoptimized JavaScript file is 153 kilobytes. The optimized one is 67. Less than half. It takes up less space on our project and it's more efficient. Same thing with the CSS file. The uncompressed one is 41k. The compressed one is 33 say 10 kilobytes. And then map, I'll explain in a moment. So what we need to do is those three files at the end here in our zip file, we need to copy them, we need to move them from the zip file into our project folder. So I'm going to open one window here and one window here. I've got my zip file of what I downloaded right here, and I've got my project folder right here. I'm going to drag those three last files into my project folder. So in your project folder now, you should see um, those three files. Three files, plus we also need one folder. We have a demos folder and an images folder. We need a copy of that images folder. That's the folder that includes all of the icons. Remember those 50 icons that jQuery Mobile 145 comes with? They're all in here. So you need to drag that whole folder, just to make it easier, drag the whole folder called images out of your zip file, drag it into your project folder, This will be complete once you see a screen that looks like mine. Your project folder should have seven items and a folder. Or six files and a folder. That's what you should have in your project. The images folder, again, that is necessary for it to display all the icons. There's a little loader icon that spins when you go from page to page. We hardly see it because our pages load up so quickly. And then we've got the different versions of the icons, either in ping format or SVG format. If you change your view here, you'll see it right there. So all of the icons that we have access to are found in that folder. That's the images folder. Then we've got jQuery Mobile CSS. That CSS file, it's, mi it's been minified, so it doesn't do us much good to actually open it to view it. So don't open it, but if I open it, it's just a huge file that's been minified. Everything's been compressed down to one line of code. It's very hard for us to work with, but it's very efficient for the project. 
But somewhere in there, in that CSS file, it references the images in the images folder. So how does exactly it work? Don't worry about it. It just works. And then uh, the jQuery mobile JS file, so uh, everything related to JavaScript that makes this work is found in there. The map file is, is an optional file, <coughs> but because we're dealing with the minified versions of the code, the minified versions, again, look like this. One long, huge line of code that just is very hard for a person to read. The unminified version, just for your information, is actually readable with comments and indenting and all of that. But this is less efficient. We saw that this is like double the size of the minified version. So what we have then, as a sort of compromise, is this map file. This map file is like a translator. If you need to edit your JS code, the map will translate it to be human readable. It's optional. We, we actually don't really need it. We're never really going to be editing our jQuery JS file. We're going to be editing our own custom JavaScript in our Kotika external JS file. So we could save an extra 100 kilobytes if we remove that. But maybe some, some time down the road, maybe I do need to edit my JS file here. It's not going to be edit editable the way it is compressed. So this map file sort of, sort of like translates it for us, for it to be readable to us. Those are the only things that I need out of my zip file. I'm going to close my zip file, and then I'm going to edit my code my code in the index file. I'm going to edit my code to reference these two local files. Let's go back to the index.html file in Notepad. We need to edit line 10 and line 16. No, uh, sorry, 10 and 11. 10 and 17. <coughs> line 10 and 17. Line 10 says link, style sheet, and a style sheet that's on the server. Let's fix that so that it simply says jQuery mobile dot jQuery dot mobile dash one dot four dot five. That's what we downloaded. We didn't download version three, we downloaded version four. Just to confirm, it is one four five, yes. So make sure your line 10 now simply looks like that. None of that HTTP stuff. We're not connecting to the online version anymore. We're working with the local version. The one we download. It will be all self-contained. We will do the same thing with line 17. That's pointing to the online version, so let's fix that. Dot four dot five. If you uh, look at it in the browser, just to confirm it worked, if it worked, you should see that the design now has the modern 1.4 design, gray. A moment ago it was black, wasn't it? That was the 1.3 design. So let's stop here for a moment. Did everyone get their 1.4 working? We'll do jQuery in just a moment. Same sort of idea. We're going to need to download the jQuery code and then change it.
All right, so um, taking a quick look here, then my project works because now it's got the gray design instead of the, the black design. The black design was jQuery Mobile 1.3, and I got 1.4. So eventually when 1.5 comes out, I haven't looked at the blog recently to see when that's supposed to come out, but it's been a little while, we will then upgrade at some point, hopefully not during the semester. Because the thing is, in my opinion, you should not upgrade some of these core files in the middle of your work. Don't upgrade your foundation during production. So maybe 1.5 will come out next week. I don't know. Maybe in two months. I don't know. We're going to be in the middle of class. I will not drop everything and have us upgrade to 1.5. We don't know how much that would break our project. We don't know what changes have been implemented. So even I myself, if I'm doing this, if I'm making an app, I'm going to have, I'm going to set down my foundation like this and work on it. I'm not going to pay attention if there's a new version and such. Because oftentimes, especially if it goes from like 1.4 to 1.5 or 2.x to 3.x, that might be a huge change that might break my project. So I don't recommend changing this foundational code in the middle of production. We're barely starting it, so we'll be okay. We we should be okay, although I do predict one thing will go wrong in a moment. Um, so we've got uh, jQuery, jQuery 1.9.1. Um, let's go check if there's a newer version of that and download that version and set it up in our project. So back to the web browser. We were at jQuery Mobile. This is all part of the same sort of family. So that first icon there takes you to the jQuery jQuery, jQuery UI, jQuery Mobile, and other things. Let's go to jQuery. 3.0 is out. We've got 1.9. It seems pretty old. The thing about jQuery, though, is there was a 1.x branch and a 2.x branch, and now there's a 3, which I think they're merging them back together. There's a big to-do. Um, but what we want to do here is Click the download on the right side. This does not automatically give you a zip file. This gives you a huge screen of things to download. <coughs> so to explain what we've got, we've got jQuery, little jQuery section, using NPM, using Bower, migrating, cross-browser testing. This is much more than a simple, here's your file, because this is much more complex. jQuery is used much more than jQuery mobile. Many, many, many websites rely on jQuery. So here they have to cover all of the bases about what are you about to do. In any event, we have the options. Well, we have release notes. Again, if we had version, we have 1.9. And now there's 3.0. It's a big jump. So when there's that whole number change, that's often a really big change that could have consequences to your project. They have most of the time release notes to tell you what has changed, what has improved, what is broken, what do you need to fix. Then we've got download the compressed production version, the uncompressed development version, the map file, and the notes. So for this one, if, don't click it, but if you click it, oh, depends on the browser. If you click it, some browsers will just show you a screen full of code. Mine, apparently I clicked it and it downloaded. I think it's going to be safer if you right-click the compressed production and select Save. Whatever yours says. Save link as, save file, save location, whatever it is. But save that. You're going to get the, the 3.0 min.js file. Let's move it over to our project. 
So wherever yours downloaded to, mine went to the desktop. I need to put that into my project folder. My project folder then is made out of the jQuery mobile supporting files and the jQuery supporting file. We need to then edit the index to point to that file. So if you go back to our code, <coughs> Line 16 is pointing to jQuery 1.9.1 online. You need to change that to jQuery 3.0.0. Yeah, it depends on the browser. Some of them opens all of your code, and some of them lets you download to go back. Go back. All right, so I have jQuery. Now, the order that it is here is important. jQuery is first, and then jQuery mobile. Oftentimes, when we deal with these web frameworks, with these online, with these JavaScript libraries, the order is important, just like most other code. The order of our code is important. jQuery relies on some code that comes from jQuery. So if those two were backwards, the project might not work because one relies on the other. But what happens is the web browser looks from top to bottom, analyzes and executes every line of code. And so if jQuery mobile were first, and jQuery mobile then references jQuery, but it hasn't existed yet, you could have problems. So short answer, this is the order. Make sure you've got jQuery first, then jQuery mobile. Later on when we talk about databases, that will be the pouch DB database. That goes after jQuery as well. It doesn't matter after jQuery mobile, but when we get to PouchDB, it will also go after jQuery. Most other libraries go after jQuery because that's such a foundational library. I'm going to save it. I'm going to check it in my browser. <clears throat> might have a problem. I'm going to check my spelling, but that's not it. Console. Remember that our console. You want to look at your console output. Uncaught type error. Cannot read property concat of undefined. So this is saying I have some sort of error in jQuery mobile 1.4.5. Well, how could that be? jQuery mobile was working just a moment ago. Did jQuery mobile file suddenly get corrupted? The last thing that I did was added jQuery 3.0. Debugging. I'm trying to figure out what happened. If I'm not here to tell you what happened, how would you figure out what happened? So going backwards on the last thing that I did, just to confirm myself that I'm not going crazy, I'm going to undo this. You don't have to do it, but I'm going to undo it to take it back to 1.9.1. I'm going to run it again. It works. So this is telling me something's going on with jQuery 3.0 and jQuery Mobile 1.4. No error, and it works. Perhaps reading those release notes might have helped. And it goes on and on to tell you. It's not going to really help. But uh, it, there's been a lot of changes in 3.0, and it's going to go on to tell you that we anticipate these releases, releases shouldn't do too much trouble when it comes to upgrading. So their hedge word, shouldn't. In our case, it did cause a problem to upgrade to the latest version. So we have a few things that we could do here. Uh, we could try to figure out what that problem is, but that requires that we sort of like crack open jQuery Mobile and fix it. And that's not my job. I'm not part of the jQuery Mobile development team. They need to get up to speed and release 1.4.6 or, or 1.5 or something. So that's not quite a viable answer. The other viable answer would be, okay, maybe we won't go to 3.0. Maybe we'll go to 2.9, you know, the, latest, the second latest version. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to get not the newest version of jQuery, 
We're going to get the latest version that we can because something's not quite compatible. They say here, yes, there are a few breaking changes that justified the bump. But we're hopeful the breakage doesn't actually affect that many people. We've got 30 people being affected right here that I could email them about. But um, short answer is, well, we need a slightly older version of jQuery. So let's back up. And in the download jQuery screen, we need to find the spot that says, where are the older versions? Oh, here we go. At the very bottom, go back to that download jQuery screen again. At the very bottom, past releases can be found here. So click at the bottom, jQuery CDN. And jQuery 3x, 2x, 1x. Okay, we'll go back to 2x. 2.2.4 seems to be the latest version. Compressed, uncompressed, or uncompressed, compressed. So we need jQuery 2x, which is 2.2.4 minified. Again, you might want to right-click it, save link, and we'll save this into your project. So the 3x branch is too new. It breaks my project. Good thing we caught it early on. Imagine if this was something we were, you know, 80% done in our project, and we said, oh, new, three, new, new jQuery, let's upgrade. And it all breaks. So we're going to go back to the 2 branch. I need to put that into my project folder. 3x is not working. We want jQuery 2.2.4 and our code should reflect that. Pause there. Uh, obviously, I could have told you right away, download 2.2.4. But I wanted to show you that sometimes there are problems. And sometimes you have to troubleshoot and be logical about it. The very last thing that I had changed broke my project. Therefore, something was wrong with jQuery. A little bit of deduction <coughs> here. We went to a, the second newest version. This should work now. So let's pause here. Did everyone get 2.x and put it into the project and it works? see that. So I'm going to refresh it in my browser. Looks gray like it's supposed to. Everything works. No, no console errors. So the point of what we're doing is that we're setting ourselves up to not rely on the internet. Our app shouldn't rely on an internet connection to function. It has features that need an internet connection, and we can deal with that later. But even the basics of it, <coughs> like the design, shouldn't rely on an internet connection. Before we, le we leave Notepad, um, our, that's what our code currently looks like. Those are the lines we changed. We should actually change it a little bit more. If you remember in the example projects that we've created previously, I had said about JavaScript should be near the bottom of the document because it does matter the order. What happens when the web browser loads this up is it goes line by line and processes it. When it gets to a JavaScript library, the web browser comes to line 16, pauses, 
nothing else happens until the web browser processes everything in jQuery. Then it proceeds to the next line. Here's another JavaScript library that it pauses. While those are pausing, nothing else shows up on screen. No buttons, no home message, no graphics, nothing shows up. Now in our case, it's instantaneous because it's a very small project. But if we had a 5,000 line long project, 5,000 lines would not show up and then our, our app would be like blank for a weird amount of time. Simple solution is we're going to have the jQuery, all the JavaScript stuff happen at the end. Let the visuals load up first in the body, then load up the JavaScript stuff, and that shouldn't make that shouldn't cause any weird pause. That should also avoid any problems with jQuery is trying to access an item that doesn't exist yet. Body has not been created if the browser stopped here. If we let everything process first, body exists, and then jQuery gets processed to reference body. What we need to do then is select lines 15 through 20, all the JavaScript stuff. Select all of that and we're going to cut it, not delete it. We're going to cut it so that we can move it all the way to the bottom right before the end of body, line 235-ish. Paste it down on line 235. Bring down all of that JavaScript, those JavaScript libraries in the comments. Um, bring them down there, and this is going to be better in the long term. Not much of a difference if you save it and run it. But if we had a big project with a lot of body content, there would be a weird pause as the JavaScript loads up if we don't do this. I'm going to clean up some of these empty lines at the top here. So back on the head, I've got link, comment, link, space, head. It doesn't matter, but our line numbers will probably not line up right after this. Save it and run it, and again, nothing should be uh, nothing should be broken. It should still behave as it's supposed to. Yes. So if I delete this, this like, we are not getting files from the CDN. We are just getting the files from the local server, right? Mm -hmm. But the client, the someone using the application, they they are still need to get internet access because it's on our server, right? Well, it's it's not it's exactly not. our server. It's, when it's eventually it's an app, this is going to be the server, right? Oh, you mean everything is downloaded in the... That's right. download application, include that file will be downloaded into the... Into the app. It will be right in the app, all bundled into one app oh. on the device, so it won't need any online server. Everyone's, like, the machine on the phone. It'll be on everyone's phone, yeah. All right, so just to confirm, mine is still working. I'm going to run that. All right, everything's up. Question. Okay, to do this, what you want to do on your keyboard is press F12. And then that should open up the developer's console. And then if you're in Chrome, you want to press this icon that looks like a, like a little phone. If you're in Firefox, it's a different icon on the right that looks like a little square in a big square. OK, so what I want to do is uh, do some work on this home screen. Um, populated with some real content and such. We'll go back to Notepad. In line 21, there's something that says header. 
this is the first bit of text that will show up in the app. I want to put the name of the app up here. So this is going to be my SDCE. This is just going to be the arbitrary name of our of our project of our app. Uh, we're creating the my SDCE app. You know, it's my the user downloads it. It's my SDCE. They're identifying with it. Home button, art button, computers. We've got another heading that simply says heading. We'll make it say welcome. Line 46. We'll have simply it'll say welcome message. It's going to say the name of the app at the top, welcome message. We've got a map. Uh, we need to move this over to a different screen a bit later. A placeholder for a graphic, and then a grid placeholder. What we want is uh, we want some graphics that make sense for this app. We're going to borrow some of the graphics that are available at, uh, at the college's own website. So I'm going to open another web browser and let's go to sdce.edu. That's the college's official website. I'm going to borrow a few graphics. First, go to the very bottom and let's see where did they put it? Organization. There is a screen. There's a screen with high quality icons of the college. I forgot to look at it before today. I think it's under hmm, corporate community. Oh, here we go. Okay, go to the college's website and hover over organization. And you'll have an item that says Style Guide and Logos. The college has a few official logos that we can download to use in our project. So it's under Organization, Style Guide and Logos. So we've got a horizontal logo with the icon, a different version, a vertical one. I might want to use these three in different ways. I want a copy of all three of them. It lets us download it as a ping file or an EPS file. Now, um, the odd thing is that if you, uh, I'm, I want to download the ping, PNG, but if I'm putting my mouse here, it's not downloadable. It seems to be on the letter G itself. There's a bug in their in their site. I want to download the ping versions, not the EPS. We can't use those. I want to download each three of these. So most likely on the G in PNG, you want to right click, save link as. Download all three of those files into your project into the images folder. Remember we've got an images folder waiting for us. So download all three of those. into the images folder. I'll leave the name alone. This is going to call it as SDCE logo.ping. You can rename it, but I'll leave the name as is. That's the first graphic. I'll get the second one. I might use it in a different way later. So same thing. You want to right click, save link as, and that one is called SDCE small logo. Save that one, and then we'll get this vertical one. That'll look good for a splash screen later on, perhaps. Uh, get the ping file. EPS is a different kind of file. It's not going to be useful for us in an app. An EPS file is a print-ready uh, uh, print ready graphic. We uh -huh. use it in Illustrator, for example, to open it up and blow it up to different sizes. These are saying these should be 5 eighths of an inch tall. We can change this to be, you know, 10 inches tall if we want with the EPS. The ping version is not really editable. It's the final version. The EPS is the editable one. We don't need the editable one. 
the one that we can edit. So just save those three. Let's say I want to show San Diego Continuing Education in my app. I'm going to borrow a couple more graphics that I, that I see. If you click Programs icon at the top, I want a copy of this graphic, this live graphic. In this case, we'll just right-click, Save Image As. I'm saving it into images. It's called Org Images. Um, save that. And we've got Student Services. There's a nice banner image at the top of each one of these that I want to take. So uh, we'll grab that image as well. Save Image As. This is called HS Banner. Certificate Program. That picture, organization, if you go back to the home screen, there's also some graphics that are in the slideshow at the top here. Maybe you want them. Save link, save image. Um, yeah, you know, if you want, maybe we can get a copy of these. We might use them as well. Dessert image. You have to wait for it to roll over to the next picture if you want any more of them. Where'd you get them? It's on the home page. It just the banner changes. I think when you put your mouse on it, it pauses. It says auto campaign. So if it, if it doesn't change, maybe you need to refresh it. Yeah, I guess if you refresh it, it changes as well. So maybe grab those pictures if you want. I'm going to have them in my folder at the end of the day also, if you didn't get them. But I got some pictures, I put them in my images folder. So I've got some real images of the college. Maybe I want to use, if you downloaded this one, maybe I want to use this one on our home page, home screen. Let's go back to Notepad. At about line uh, 50 or so, 48, 59, 49 or so. I see a line that says image, source, blah, 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 the CDN version of just a blank image, called style, etc. So you should find something that says image source. We're going to change that to have it display one of the graphics that we downloaded. I think I want to display this one right here, and this image is called autocampaign.jpg. So we're going to change line 49 to say autocampaign.jpg but didn't we save our images into an images folder so if I simply type that it won't work it won't find the graphic we placed our images in a subfolder so we first have to write images slash and the name of the graphic Previously, every other element, every other supporting file, was in the same folder, the same level of folder, as the index file. So if my auto campaign JPEG file was in the same level as index HTML, I just simply type auto campaign.jpg, and it would work. But I put, or I asked us, you may have not done it, but I said, put your images in the images folder. There's auto campaign. So therefore, my full path to the image includes the name of the folder, images slash auto campaign. 
And now if I save and run it, it should show the picture. Almost. It's kind of there. It's kind of But the picture has several issues. But I kind of see it. What's happening is, for whatever reason, when we set this up with Kodika, they created a very basic image placeholder. But it did it in a pretty weird way. It created a div with sort of like an outer design. It set a width and a height, position, background color, border color. Okay, created a simple kind of border around the picture. It did it inline, which is not our favorite. It wrote some inline CSS. We need to make it external a little bit later. That's more better practice. That's not the bad, that's not the worst part. The worst part is for some reason, again, line 49 has also some CSS, inline CSS attached to the picture itself and some weird CSS. Position absolute, top 50%, left 50%. That's why my picture is flying out of the, the, the box. It's saying place it 50% from the top of the box and 50% from the left of the box. So my picture is halfway out of the box. Maybe they had an idea for a cool design, but clearly I don't see it. That's what this is saying. Position the picture absolutely from the top 50%, from the left 50%. I can change those numbers to position it a little bit better, such as zero from the top and zero from the left. That defeats the purpose, though. Then we've got a margin left minus 16 pixels. So we're moving it to the right 50%, but then bringing it back 16 pixels. And then again, move it from the top 50% down, but then pull it back 18 pixels. So that whole CSS thing is just mis mystifying to me. It has, it's weird. It has no purpose. I'm going to remove the whole thing. We don't even want inline CSS, really. So that whole style attached to the image, just remove it. It doesn't really do anything useful. Just make it say very basically image source alt. I'll mention alt in a moment, but let's see if that made it look a little better. Well, it's not flying out of my box anymore, but it's still huge. We'll get to that in a moment. So that image tag, you just shorten it down to its source and an alt. Alt is alternative text. If we have a picture, I believe we talked about it on the first day of class. If we have a picture, we should have alt text, which is a simple descriptor of what the picture is. This is useful for accessibility. Uh, people have websites, I mean, uh, people have uh, web browsers. When they browse a website, people that are blind that the web browser can read to them what the picture is, if we include alt text. The computer will simply read to a person image. It has no, has no meaning. So a simpler description of that picture would be something like um, our auto, our automotive major. This is a picture about our automotive major. You're not going to see that text appear on screen. That text is only for people that need to hear the, the text. Right now the picture is very large and it pops out of the box. We're gonna, uh, we can approach this in several ways. Let's do one way like this, then we'll take a break, then we'll make it better. We will temporarily 
add, well, nah, we'll do it the real way. Why waste time? We're going to write some CSS, some external CSS. Let's attach a class to that image. A class we can reuse throughout our project. Remember, we write the CSS once, we define what it means, and then we attach it throughout our project. This image, I want it to fit nicely inside of this, inside of this box. To reference it, we give it a class name. We will call this um, IMG um, full. <coughs> I did put a capital F, which is optional. That's just for readability. My class name that I'm inventing. There's already an IMG tag, so I wouldn't want to reuse that name. I'm creating one called IMG full. So save your index file. And now let's move over to our CSS file. Codica.external.css. Put your custom CSS here. On line three, we'll write dot the name of the class we just wrote, space curly brace, space curly brace, between the curly braces we'll write with colon space 100% semicolon. We could have written that directly on the image. We could have written style equals with 100% but that would have only applied to that one image. I may want to do this to multiple images throughout my project. So it's better then to write it as a class, a CSS class that I can reuse. If we're editing now our if we're editing now our index file and our CSS file, we have two files that we need to make sure are saved before we check it in the browser. So we have file save all, or the icon up here with multiple disks. One disk is save the current file that I have selected, and the multiple disks save all my files. Perhaps we should get into the habit of, say, of doing save all because we're going to be jumping between editing HTML file, CSS file, JS file, multiple files. If they're not all saved, we will not get the results that we expect when we test it. So save all files. And now when you run it, and be careful here also, if I'm in the Kodika file and I go to run Firefox, it will run my CSS file, which will look like that. So you want to run your index file. You have to jump back to index and run index. This will happen to us all the time when we're in the JavaScript file. We're going to write a lot of JavaScript, really get into it, we'll save it and run it, and whoops, page full of JavaScript. Remember to run your index file. The result should be that the picture now is 100% wide inside of the box created. If I have a really big picture, it shrinks down to 100% of the size of the container, which I think is too small. The CSS code is fine. It's going to grow to the size of the container. Then the container is what's wrong. What I also see is that the picture still kind of pops out a little bit past the container. <coughs> can't quite see it, but the container ends right there, then the map starts and there's an overlap. Again, Kodika created for us a temporary image container that is actually is a little more trouble than it was worth. But if it's okay so that we can kind of understand what, we, what we're working with. Back to index. Image file is fine. Div style my style with 
288. Oh, okay, so we're seeing that there's an artificial size of a container here. Our image that we're putting into it doesn't fit within those constraints. For the moment, let's simply remove the height property. If we only specify a width, the height is sort of automatically applied to stay in proportion. If we force a height and a width, it will be forced to a certain dimension and it might look weird. So here I simply left a width, remove the whole height property and value. And if I check that result, it's a little better. It still has these weird edges and such, which we'll, which we'll fix later. But this is what I'm getting at when I said previously. HTML, easy. CSS, a little harder. JavaScript, hardest. So even little basic things like this, I just want to put my picture on my screen, it has a bunch of nuances that we have to deal with. Let's save our work and take our first break. When we come back, we'll keep wrestling with this a little bit more. We'll make it look exactly how we want. We want to make it responsive. This picture is stuck at a certain size. I want it to actually grow and shrink depending on the size of the person's device. 710, let's take a break until 720, and then we'll go on.